Gentlemen, in the final level of this competition, we're asking you to make a short sword. And we're asking you to make it out of this. Pieces of large high carbon steel and small high carbon steel. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your eight hour starts now. The fiery furnace of Forged in Fire is no joke. Only the most skilled bladesmiths can withstand its heat. Ben Abbott is an ultimate warrior who emerged victorious in season two with his impeccable sword swinging skills leaving fans and judges in awe. With his irreplaceable talent and sprinkle of luck, he came back for Season 3 and stayed victorious with his dedication to Blades. However, the champion mysteriously disappeared from the screen, leaving his fans puzzled. Where did he go? Did he melt into the furnace? Or go on a journey to a distant land to further hone his skills? Well, let's find out what really happened to Ben Abbott from Forged in Fire. Ben. Bladesmiths. In this sudden elimination round, I'll be smashing your knives into these blocks of ice 10 times. Steve, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's do it. Nothing matched the fun of watching skilled blacksmiths play with metal to bring a red hot piece to life with nothing else but his hands and some heavy strikes of a hammer. And when it comes to the world of bladesmithing, nothing can beat the class of Ben Abbott. Ben first burst into the scene in the second season of the History Channel's hit program Forged in Fire. He performed in front of judges and, surprisingly, his performance was nothing less than a miracle. He bravely took the toughest challenges on the show and emerged victorious every time, proving that he is the master of his craft. But it wasn't just Ben's skills that won over fans and judges alike. His passion, dedication, and determination brought out the best in him. And that's what made his return to Forged in Fire for the third season more exciting. This time, he was up against three other champions from previous seasons. Each one was a difficult opponent to compete with. But did that deter Ben? Not in the slightest. In fact, it just fueled his fire even more. And that fire was destined to burn bright. The result was according to the expectations of his fans. Ben emerged victorious once again and he became the second person in the show's history to win the huge cash prize twice. But it wasn't just about the money for Ben. It was all about proving to the world and himself that he was the real deal. Not just an ordinary blade maker winning all on the shoulders of fate. Do you know where Ben's love for blade making came from? It all started when he was just a 13-year-old young boy living in an ordinary town in the United Kingdom. Since his childhood started, he was fascinated by arms and armor. He loved those displayed at old castles and museums, but due to financial conditions, he was not able to purchase a sword of his own. So he decided to make a sword for himself. He did first attempt to create one, but it turned out as a disaster. Undeterred, he switched gears at 17 and started working on knives instead, eventually branching out into decorative ironwork, jewelry, and furniture. Ben was admitted into electrical engineering at the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, before going on to his dream career in Pasadena, California. After this, he started creating his place in history. Ben's journey to Forged in Fire Season 2 and 3 has inspired a million fans to follow in his footsteps and make their mark in the world of blade making. But the legend of the blade making world disappeared after two seasons. Well, this seems absurd if we talk about Ben Abbott and Forged in Fire and forget to reveal the blades he made in Season 2 and 3. In Season 2 of Forged in Fire, the bladesmiths were given the task of creating signature blades in the first round. The blade that stood out was Kanda, made by Ben. It was a historic weapon with roots in Indian history and culture. For the finale, he made a Kanda sword that was visually stunning and durable to withstand rigorous testing. His sword was put to grinding, heat testing, and forging tests, but his sword was all set to reign supreme so it made him the crowned winner of Season 2. Moreover, his sword got high praise from judges and fans for its overall craftsmanship and edge retention ability. Season 3 of the show was more exciting than Season 2 because Ben was again there to compete. This time, the format was changed to beat the judges, and the bladesmiths competed against the show's judges for a chance to win a cash prize. In Short Sword Damascus, the bladesmiths were given the task of creating a double-edged sword by using high-carbon steel. 
The sword Ben made was in a Damascus pattern that was both structurally and visually striking. However, in the Rockstar Smiths round, the contestants were asked to make a short sword with a blade called Cinquedia by using high carbon steel bars. Ben once again proved his craft in front of judges and grabbed the crown once again. Ben disappeared after being a part of two seasons of Forged in Fire, leaving all his fans in awe. However, he returned back in Season 8 to compete. In Season 8, there was a special competition in which the goal for contestants was for three competitors to beat Ben's win streak of 4-0. The competition had two rounds, and the challenger who won the first round got to choose the style and parameters of the final weapon. Ben sometimes added a twist to the parameters of the weapon. In the end, Ben Abbott maintained his unbeaten win streak, and his record became 9-0. The first round was to make a Messer Sword with layered Damascus. In the second round, the competitors had to make an Irish ring hilted sword with ladder pattern Damascus steel. For the third round, the challenge was to make a 17th century Chinese war sword with random pattern Damascus steel. But Ben Abbott added a twist by requiring a minimum layer count of 125. In the final two episodes of the special, there were only two challengers competing for the chance to go against Ben. The competition was intense, but Ben Abbott emerged victorious once again. After winning season two and three, Ben had a lot of followers who wanted him to continue his blade making journey. In season four, one of the judges, Jay Nielsen, had to take a break due to hand surgery. Ben was selected to take up his position and fill the vacant seat. The audience loved him as a judge too. Despite winning a lot of hearts and having a huge fan following, Ben is not much active socially. After joining the show as a judge, he mentioned that he gets very little time for blacksmithing. However, he still managed to create some impressive blades in season 4 of the show. Moreover, he apologized to the fans for not making as many blades as they hoped for. His passion for blade creation showed that he was more dedicated to his craft rather than fame, and that's why his blade stood out over the rest of the contestants, always. Besides being a champion twice, Ben has stayed a down-to-earth person who showed that he's only committed to his craft. Though he had a background in electrical engineering and worked as a robotic engineer, nothing could beat his interest in being a full-time bladesmith. Not only this, he has an unbeatable passion for teaching and offers classes for learning the art of knife making and blacksmithing. In addition to making blades, Ben also enjoys woodworking. He has created some impressive furniture pieces that are stunning too, like his blades. Above everything, his laid-back personality has won many hearts. His sense of humor is second to none. He was also seen joking with his fellows and friends on the sets of Forge in Fire. You'll be surprised to know that he's a fan of music too and loves heavy metal music. You must have seen it in his knife designs too. Besides this, Ben has a deep appreciation for history. He loves researching and recreating blades from different time periods and cultures. Though he's not very active on social media, he keeps on updating his fans about his work and new pieces that he makes. His personal life's not very much exposed to the social media world because Ben loves to keep the details hidden under the carpet. However, he's married to Heather Rabin, who is a dancer, choreographer, and artist. The couple welcomed their first child, Elder James Abbott, on October 20th, 2020. The dad's now seen creating masterpieces like butcher's blocks, coffee tables, and a baby crib along with his son. All in all, Ben Abbott is truly a renaissance man. He knows how to blend his diverse interests and talents into a unique and fascinating personality.